religion, this grace that the false prophets are preaching about whereby you can continue in sin. You can know the Lord in sin. You don't have to depart from iniquity. You can still be a fornicator. You can still be an adultery. You can still hate your neighbor, but also you can still say that you know God. We're not talking about this kind of false grace. We're talking about the true grace of God today. That grace of God that bringeth salvation. And the word of God tells me, uh, Titus chapter 2 rather, is the scripture that we're looking for. Titus chapter 2 in verse 11. The word of God says, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Now this is the grace of God that we want to talk to you about today, men and brethren. That grace whereby you can live righteously, whereby you can live godly in this present world. We're saying are you hearing about this true grace of God in your church today? Are you hearing about this true grace of God whereby you can come out of sin, whereby you can truly be delivered from all sin and all unrighteousness? The Word of God goes on to say, let's look in the book of 1 Timothy, and chapter 2, I believe it is. 2 Timothy, rather, chapter 2, and verses 19. Word of God declares, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Again, men and brethren, we laboring to show you today about God's grace. God's true grace. That grace that delivers from sin. Not grace to be rich. In a lot of false churches today, that's all they're about is being rich. You know, making it in the world. But I hear the word of God telling me, he that seeks to save his life in this world, the word of God says you're going to lose it. But if you lose your life in this world for Christ, the word of God says seek first 
the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. And the Lord says, I'll add on to you all those things that you have need of. But we're telling you, men and brethren, this grace of God that truly bringeth salvation, it's going to deliver you today from all sin. It's going to deliver you today from all unrighteousness. It's going to give you power to live godly in your flesh in these last days. I hear the word of God saying in St. John chapter 1, it says the Lord, he was manifested in the flesh. It says he came unto his own, the Jews, and his own would not receive him. They didn't want to hear his message. But the scripture says to as many as would receive Christ, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. And we're telling you today, men and brethren, there is power to live godly. We're telling you today, men and brethren, there is power to live a life free from sin. There is power to live sanctified in your flesh. We're saying, men and brethren, have you heard about the true grace of God today? This true grace of God that truly bringeth salvation. The word of God says, men and brethren, the foundation of God, it standeth sure. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from sin. We want to show you another scripture, brethren. In the book of 1 John, chapter 3. 1 John, chapter 3. And the word of God declares here, in verses 3. Word of God says, Every man that has his hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. Again, men and, men, men and brethren, how, in how many churches have you heard this form of doctrine being preached? Again, showing you God's true plan of salvation for your life. Showing you Christ's mission for coming into the world. It wasn't to give you a blank check to continue in sin. Even as I hear the word of God saying in the book of Romans chapter 6. We're going to come back to 1 John chapter 3 in a moment. But we want to take you first to Romans chapter 6. The word of God says, what shall we say then? Verse 1. Shall we continue in sin? that grace may abound. The word of God tells me, God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And this is what you're not being taught in these false churches, men and brethren. That if you're saying that you're of God, if you're saying that the Spirit of Christ is abiding in you, no, you're not that you're supposed to be dead to sin? No, you're not that you're supposed to be dead to all unrighteousness? The word of God goes on to say here, verse 3, Know you not that to as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, we were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. We're telling you today, men and brethren, you got to know what it means to truly be born again. We're saying, men and brethren, St. John chapter 3, I heard the Lord telling Nicodemus, Verily, verily, I say unto you, you must be born again. 
And we're not talking about being born again like the world talks about being born again. We're not talking about just being dumped down in some water. But then when you come up out of that water, you're still believing in sin. You're still filled with all unrighteousness. That's not being born again. When you've truly been born again, you got to be born again of the Spirit. Not just of the water, but also of the Spirit of God. We're telling you today, men and brethren, I heard the Lord telling his disciples in St. Matthew chapter 16, the Lord told them, except you pick up your cross and follow after my example. I heard the Lord telling his disciples in St. Matthew chapter 16, the Lord says, I'm going to Jerusalem to suffer and to give my life for a, as a ransom for many. But I heard the Lord go on to say to his disciples, he said, except you follow my example and pick up your cross, you are not worthy to be my disciple. We're saying to the brethren, you got to understand what the baptism of Christ is all about. You got to understand what's taking place in that baptism. When you go down in that water, you got to understand that a spiritual operation is taking place. An operation of faith is taking place. That old man of sin, that corruptible man that you were when you were in the world before you knew Christ, that old man of sin that you were born with, we, we're saying when you go down in that water, brethren, the Lord performs a spiritual operation. That old man of sin is supposed to be put to death by faith in Jesus Christ. And you're supposed to arise a new creature. All those old things that you used to be about before should be passed away. All those sins, all that unrighteousness that you used to be private to before, should be passed away and all things are supposed to become new in Christ. We're telling you today, men and brethren, have you truly been born again? Not using it as a catchphrase like so many of these false Christians do. We're saying, have you truly been born again by the Spirit of God? Not just by the water, but also by the Spirit of God. Have you your, that old man, that old creature of sin, that old creature that didn't know God, that didn't love God, that old creature that loves sin and unrighteousness, have that old creature been put to death in you? We're saying, have you put on Christ today? I hear the word of God saying, as many as have been baptized into Christ, you're supposed to be putting on Christ. We're saying, have you put on Christ today? What of God tells me, know you not that as many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, you should have been baptized into his death, that just like Christ rose from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should be laboring today to walk in that newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You're not going to hear this kind of preaching in these false churches, men and brethren. The flesh want to talk about how they've been born again. But as we said, they're still in sin. They're still in adultery. They're still with that second and third wife. They're still in fornication. Believing that they can have boyfriends and girlfriends. The word of God tells me. It says marriage is honorable in all. And the bed is undefiled in true marriage. But all whoremongers and all adulterers. God is going to judge. We're telling you today men and brethren. You got to judge within yourself. You got to examine yourself today. To see whether you've truly been born again today, whether you truly 
have received Christ in your life. It's not just doing it with your mouth. The word of God tells me, let us not love just in word or in tongue, but you gotta prove your love for God in deed and in truth. The word of God says here, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. We're saying today, brethren, have your old man been put to death with Christ today? We're saying, are you still in sin today? Because if you're still in sin, if you're still loving unrighteousness, we're saying it don't matter how much you go to church. We're saying if you still love the works of the devil, it don't matter how many tithes you pay. I hear the word of God saying in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, the word of God tells me, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but if I don't have charity, Paul says I'm just like a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. He said, though I give all my goods to feed the poor, I could give my body to be burned. But if I don't have this true charity, this true love of God, it profiteth me nothing. And you got to understand about the true love of God today, men and brethren. The word of God tells me that, that God's love, it don't work no ill to his neighbor. God's love don't sin against his neighbor. That's the true love of God. That's the difference between God's love and man's love. And I hear the word of God saying, the Lord told his disciples in St. John chapter 15, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And we're saying you got to understand, you got to perceive the love of God today. The Lord loved us so much that he gave his life. He loved us to the death, even the death of the cross. And we say, the Lord is telling us today that this is the Lord. The Lord, the Lord said, this is my commandment that you love one another that same way. We're saying, have you perceived this love of God today, men and brethren? That love that won't sin against his neighbor. That love that won't lust against his neighbor. That love that won't hate his neighbor without a cause. That love that don't covet his neighbor's goods. Have you perceived the true love of God today? The word of God goes on to say that old man of sin is supposed to be crucified with Christ. That old man of sin, that body of sin, should be destroyed in the baptism. That henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead, the word of God tells me, should be free from sin. We're asking you today, men and brethren, have you been set free from sin today? Because if you're still a servant of sin, as we're going to get down and show you in the word of God, we say you truly haven't been born again. If you're still a slave to those lusts in your flesh, if you're still a slave to the liquor bottle, if you're still a slave to those cigarettes, if you're still a slave, to strange woman and strange flesh. We're telling you today, you haven't truly known God. You haven't truly received God's spirit. We're saying today, men and brethren, the Lord was revealed in these last days to take away all of our sin and all of our iniquity. And we're saying today, men and brethren, you gotta labor not to take this grace of God in vain by continuing in sin. This is what we showed you. In the beginning of the chapter, in Romans chapter 6, shall we continue in sin that God's grace should just abound? The word of God says, God forbid. How shall we that should be dead to sin live any longer therein? The word of God says, he that is dead is freed from sin. We say, men and brethren, you got to have faith in the baptism of Christ, that true baptism where you're not just being dumped down in some water, but truly being born again of the Spirit of God. The Word of God says, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with Him, knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dies no more, death has no more dominion over Him. And just like death has no more dominion over Christ, 
we're saying that's just a shadow of how sin should not have any more dominion over the Christian. Sin and unrighteousness should not have any more dominion over the child of God. The word of God tells me, brethren, that greater is he that is in the Christian. Greater is he that is in the child of God than he that is in the world. The word of God tells me, it says here, in that he died, he died unto sin once, and that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin. Listen, listen to the word of God, men and brethren. We're saying, I know, a lot of the, the flesh and false religion today, they don't like truth like this being preached. And you know why that is? It's because they love sin. The world, they love unrighteousness. They drink it down like water. But we're telling you today, men and brethren, God is looking for the true believers. I heard the Lord say that in St. John chapter 4. He told the woman at the well, God is a spirit. And he's looking for them that's going to worship him in spirit and in truth. Not just anyone can call themselves after the name of Christ. We're saying it's a special thing, men and brethren, to be called a son of God. Even as we're going to show you that in first John, if anybody can't call themselves a son of God, that's a special privilege. And you got to know what it means to be a son of God. You got to know what it means to be a child of God, to name yourself by the name of Christ. As we showed you in 2 Timothy chapter 2, the scripture says, let everyone that nameth himself by the name of Christ, let him depart from iniquity. We're telling you today, men and brethren, just in these few scriptures that we've shown with you thus far, you should see that there's a big difference between true religion and what you're hearing in a lot of these false churches, they're not preaching Christ's righteousness today. But I hear the word of God saying in the book of Romans chapter 10, the problem in the world today is that men don't want to be subject to God's righteousness, but they want to go about trying to establish their own righteousness. And we're telling you today, men and brethren, your righteousness is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You've got to humble yourself to Christ's righteousness. You got to humble yourself to what thus saith the Lord. Christ is the author and the finisher of this eternal salvation. Christ is the one that gave his life, that suffered on Calvary's cross, that was beaten all night, suffered, gave his life, not for his own sins, because Christ didn't sin. Christ was without sin. He suffered like that for our sins. He suffered like that to deliver us from sin. And now we got to have faith to follow in that same example, men and brethren. The word of God tells me in 1 Peter chapter 2, it says that herein Christ came and left us an example that we should labor to follow in his steps who did no sin. Christ did no sin. Neither was there any guile in the Lord's mouth. And the word of God tells me that example of righteousness and holiness that Christ gave us, it wasn't for his benefit alone. It says for this purpose, Christ was manifested and left us that example of godliness. He left us that example of sanctification in the flesh so that we might labor to follow in those same steps. The word of God says here, it says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. These scriptures, brethren, are very plain to me. But like we say, because the world loves sin so much, because the world loves unrighteousness, they want to try to change the word of God. They want to try to come with all of these new, funny, revised Bibles. They want to come with all of these different, you know, trying to change the word of God because they don't want to be subject to the word of God. But we're not trying to change the word of God, men and brethren. We're going to tell it to you as it is. We're here to declare unto you the truth of the revelation of Jesus Christ. The word of God says here, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in the lust thereof. And neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness or to sin, 
but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. We're asking you today, men and brethren, have you yielded yourself unto God today? Are you yielding your members, the members of your body, unto God's righteousness today? Or are your members still being used in service to sin, in service to the devil? We're saying today you got to judge within yourself, men and brethren. you got to examine yourselves today, men and brethren. The Word of God says, but yield yourself unto God as those that are alive from the dead in your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. The scripture says, For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. We're asking you today, men and brethren, does sin still have dominion in your life today? The word of God tells me, sin should not have dominion in the life of the Christian. Sin should not still have dominion in the life of a son of God. The word of God says, sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. This is the true grace of God, men and brethren, that we showed you in Titus chapter 2, that grace of God that truly brings salvation. This is the grace that we're talking to you about today, brethren. As we said, not that grace that you're going to hear about in the false church, where you got grace to commit sin. We sinners, they say, saved by grace. You know, there is no such grace. The grace of God was not to empower you to commit more sin. You are already in sin. Why do you need more grace to continue in sin? Why do you need more ability to do what you were already doing before? No, that's not what the grace of God is about. There is no such thing as a sinner saved by grace. We're saying the grace of God is bringing salvation today. The grace of God is to set you free from sin today. That's what we showed you in St. Matthew chapter 1. It said the angel told Joseph that his wife Mary was going to bring forth that child. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. We saying, have you been saved today, brother? Again, it's another one of those phrases that, you know, those things that the world, they want to just turn it into a catchphrase. Have you been saved? Everybody want to say, yeah, I've been saved. But you still, if you're still in sin, brother, you haven't been saved. What have you been saved from? You shouldn't be being saved from sin. If you're still in sin, you haven't truly been saved. If you're still in sin, you haven't truly been born again. The word of God says, Sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. What then shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourselves servants to obey his servants you are. I love the word of God, men and brethren. I love how it's plain and it's to the point. The Lord said, don't you understand that to whoever you yield your members to obey, that's whose service you are. If you yield in your members to sin, to unrighteousness, to serve the devil, that's whose service you are. You can't be serving the devil with your body, but then trying to say you love God with your mouth. The word of God says to whom you yield the members of your body servants to obey, that's whose service you are. If you truly a child of God, if you've truly been called to be a son of God, you're going to be yielding your members, even as you see us doing today. You're going to be using your members to do God's will in the earth in these last days. The word of God says here, to whom you yield yourself serves to obey. His service you are to whom you obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be saved that you were the servants of sin. You see, past tense, you were the servants of sin. But now you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered unto you. We're going to give you one more scripture here, brethren, in 1 John chapter 3. And again, we want to show you how plain the word of God is to them that can receive it, to them that can believe it. 1 John chapter 3, 
The word of God says here, verse 4, Whosoever committed sin, transgressing also the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. And you know, look what the word of God says. He was manifested to take away our sins. And in him is no sin. The word of God says here, this is why the Son of God was manifested, brethren, to take away our sins. It says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. I don't know how to make it no plainer than that. The word of God tells me, if you abiding in Christ, if the Spirit of Christ is really in you, you're not going to sin. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. And whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him, this is what we're telling you today, men and brethren. It don't matter whether you call yourself a Catholic. It don't matter whether you call yourself a Baptist, a Pentecostal, Jehovah Witness. We sing, if you're still in sin, you don't know Christ, neither have you seen him. The word of God goes on to say, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, just like Christ is righteous and he that committed sin is of the devil this is not my words men and brethren this is the word of god the word of god tells me let no man deceive you i don't care how long a minister might say he's been preaching the gospel like the billy grahams like the jimmy swaggers like the Paul roberts it don't matter how long they might claim to be preaching they might have the prestige in the honor of men. But we are more interested in receiving that honor that comes from God only. We're saying the word of God says, men and brethren, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And he that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now you understand, men and brethren, now you understand the real purpose for why Christ came into the flesh. It wasn't to give us a blank check to continue in sin, but it was to destroy sin in the flesh. It was to destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. That's the word of God right there, men and brethren. We're not changing it one way or the other. That's the word of God. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. That means the spirit of God is in him and therefore he cannot sin because he is born of God. Think about it, men and brethren. If the spirit of Christ is truly dwelling in one, how can you continue in sin? If the spirit of Christ is holy, the spirit of Christ is righteous. The Spirit of Christ is God. And if you claim in that, that God's Spirit is in you, the Spirit of Christ is in you, well, how can you be in sin? The Word of God tells me if the root is holy, so should be the branches. How can the root be holy, but the branches not be holy? That doesn't make any sense. We're telling you today, think about what we're saying, minute brother. The Word of God says here, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Amen, brother. We're going to leave these scriptures with you, and we hope that we gave you a little more understanding about the true gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. What it means to truly call yourself a Christian. What it means to truly say that you have the Spirit of God. We have another brother here with us that's going to continue. Give you a little more enlightenment and understanding in the Word of God. In Jesus' name. If you have any questions, feel free to come up, speak with us. Amen. Amen, amen, brethren. We are members of the church of the living God. And we are here today on your street corner 
to declare the unadulterated word of God today, even as the minister before was showing us the will of God for our life in these last days. Word of God shows us, men and brethren, in the book of 1 John chapter 3, how there have to be a difference in the Son of God, the true Son of God, and those, you know, that are still in their sins. What of God says here in 1 John chapter 3? It says, Little children, let no man deceive you, for he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. And this is what the world is deceived about, men and brethren. They think that they can believe in God, or they think they can know God, yet still walking in sin and iniquity. But the Word of God says in 2 Timothy chapter 2 that let him that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity and sin in these last days, men and brethren. That means you cannot know God in sin. And God doesn't know you in your sins, men and brethren. And this is the reason that we're here today to make the difference between the true Son of God and the false Christians. Those that just have the word of mouth, word of service, trying to please God and worship God with their mouth. But the word of God says their heart is far away from me. What of God says, he that committeth sin is of the devil today. And this is why you need to examine your life today, men and brethren. Because if you in sin today, and I know that's the confession of the world, that's the confession of the so-called Christians in the world, that the flesh is weak to sin, that they have to sin, because there is no man that don't sin against God. But we're telling you this is the purpose of Christ coming in the flesh, men and brethren. It's to bring us the power of his grace that we might be delivered from sin and iniquity. He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. And for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil, men and brethren. God came in flesh and blood as Jesus Christ, men and brethren, his own Son, to show you how to put Satan to death in your flesh. It says, whosoever is born of God, now examine yourself today. Have you been truly baptized in the death of Christ? Are you truly born of God today? Because what God says, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin. You can't sin when you are abiding in God's righteousness, men and brethren. You cannot sin when you are abiding in the grace of God today. What of God says in Titus chapter 2, verses 11, it says that the grace of God that appeared unto all men in these last days is teaching us how to deny ungodliness. That's what the grace of God is for. The grace of God is the Spirit of God. It's the power of God today given unto those that can have faith in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It says the grace of God that bringeth this salvation hath appeared unto all men. And this grace is teaching us 
that deny ungodliness, men and brethren. You see, God is not a sinner. God doesn't have no darkness in him, men and brethren. What well, God says in 1 John chapter 1, that God is light. And in him, there is no darkness at all. In he, I believe the word of God says here, if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And this is why we're coming against the so-called Baptist faith today, men and brethren. Because they confess in the name of Christ. They confessing that they love God. But yet they still in sin. They still in darkness. They still in fornication, men and brethren. And the word of God says again here. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. And we're telling you, a lot of so-called Christians are lying today. A lot of so-called religious faith are lying today. They don't really know God because they're still abiding in sin. Because they still can't be obedient unto the word of God today. What God says here, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the brethren. And this is the problem today. I hear the word of God says, I believe, in Romans chapter 10, it says that, we look at that in Romans chapter 10. How the flesh don't want to submit themselves to the righteousness of God going about to establish their own righteousness men and brethren you see you cannot be saved like that you cannot know God like that establishing your own righteousness it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved even today we hope that some of you might have faith to hear the word of God. We hope that some of you might have faith to humble yourself and be obedient to the word of God. That you might be saved today. But I bear the record that they have a zeal of God. There's a lot of churches in the world that have zeal of God, men and brethren. You have so many Catholic religions Catholic churches, so many Baptist churches, so many Seventh-day Adventist churches, having zeal of God. But the Word of God says they're ignorant of God's righteousness because they don't want to submit themselves to the Word of God today, men and brethren. The Word of God says, I bear the record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to to knowledge. Well, God said that my people perish because of lack of knowledge. Today, by the grace of God, is a day of salvation. Today is a day that you can receive salvation if you can have faith to hear what does say for the brethren today. It says, for they are being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, men and brethren. You cannot be saved when you have established your own righteousness. The Baptist faith have established their own righteousness. The Catholic faith, they have established their own righteousness, men and brethren. And this is why that they still in sin today, because they're not abiding in the body of Christ. What well, God says there is one body, there is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one God and Father of all, by the grace of God, men and brethren. And if you're not having faith in the true body of Christ, men and brethren, we're saying you cannot be saved. But today is a day of salvation. Today is a day of opportunity. Today is a day of a lifetime, men and brethren. If you can have faith, to receive 
the word of God going forth today. It says, they being ignorant of God's righteousness, going about to establish their own righteousness, and have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. We say, men and brethren, today, the only way you can be saved, the only way you can live that life free of all sins that we're declaring to you today is that you have faith to deny your life in this world. What God says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 24, it says, Whosoever will come after me, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself today, men and brethren. And this is what you have to do. You have no choice in the matter today, men and brethren. You have to deny your life in this world. You have to deny your fornication, your adulterous life. You have to deny that life of pleasure in this world, men and brethren. And come to God today. Come to Christ that you might be sanctified, that you might become holy and righteous like God is holy today, men and brethren. It says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. That means you gotta suffer for the name of Christ. It's not about the pleasure of this life. It's not about the lust of the eyes, the lust of the eyes or the pride of this life, men and brethren. But it's about picking up your cross. It's about denying your life to serve the living God today, men and brethren. What God says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Let him pick up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life in this world, and a lot of people, that's what they're doing, saving their life in this world. They're all about the monies. You know, they're all about the house. They're all about the new cars. They're all about their education in this world. They're all about seeking for their life in this world. But the Word of God says in Matthew 16, verse 24 and 25, if any man will come after me today, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me today. What of God continue to say here? Whosoever will save his life, you shall lose it, men and brethren. You might be thinking that you have something going for you in the world. You might be thinking you're rich in this world. You have everything you need in this world. But God is showing us here, if you're looking for your life in this world, you shall lose it when you die. What God says is a day appointed for every man to die. After that is the judgment. We say, think about your life today. Think about where you're going to spend your eternity today, men and women. Examine your life to see if you're living that holy life. If you're living that godly life in this present world, the word of God shows us. It says here, <laughs> what God says here, back in Matthew chapter 16, will come after me let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me for whosoever will save his life shall lose it and whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it men and brethren and this is what you need to understand today this gospel is not the gospel of the Jehovah's Witness. This gospel is not the gospel of the Baptist Church or the Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's not the gospel of the Catholic Pope, men and brethren. This gospel is the only
only gospel that can save you from sin and death today. But you gotta have faith. You gotta have faith to believe. And what does say the Lord today, men and brethren? It says, for what is a man profited if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Men and brethren, doesn't matter if you gain the world, if you're rich in the world today, if you have everything that you need in the world, but you don't have God. When you die, you will open your eyes and hell in the lake of fire. But today, you can make that difference. Today, you can become a son of God. Today, you can receive the salvation, men and brethren. What God says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your hearts. But by the grace of God, humble yourself today and receive the engrafted word of God. We go back here in Titus chapter 2. In Titus chapter 2 it says, The grace of God that appeal unto all men and bring us salvation is teaching us to deny ungodliness. It's teaching us to deny worldly lusts, men and brethren. All that evil that the flesh be doing in a private room all that homosexuality men and brethren that the flesh is involved in all that lesbian activity the flesh is involved in in these last days all that fornication young men that's not married the flesh is involved in in these last days these young women is involved in fornication in these last days, men and brethren, the word of God is telling us today that the grace of God that came to show us this salvation is showing us how to deny ungodliness, how to deny all this worldly lust by the grace of God, men and brethren. It says we should live soberly today. We should live righteously today. Not when you die, men and brethren, but today in this present world, when you die, it's too late. You can't be working no more when you die. That's why today, while you have the breath of life in you, you need to have faith to do God's will, men and brethren. That grace of God is available. That grace of God has appeared unto all men and is teaching you today by faith to deny your life to deny unrighteousness, to deny ungodliness, men and brethren. But how can you do that except you come to the body of Christ? How can you know God except God sent a man to teach you about him? What God says in Romans chapter 10, how can one know him except God sent a man? How can one teach the word of God or preach the word of God except God call him today, men and brethren. We're telling you that the Baptist preacher, God have not sent him. Why are you saying that, minister? It's because of their confession. They have a confession that they are sinners. They still sinners. And they're trying to claim that God's grace is abiding in them. That's a lie, men and brethren. God's grace is not abiding in a sinner today. God's grace is to take you out of sin. God's grace is to keep you from sin by the grace of God. But if you're in sin, you don't have God's grace. That's why we come against the Baptist faith, the Catholic faith, the Methodist faith, the religious, the Jewish faith. That's why we come against those faith because they're still confessing that they are sinners. But the true Son of God, the true Son of God that has been made manifest on the earth today, His confession is that we live a life free from all sins. His confession is that the power of God, the Spirit of God is dwelling in us today. And we cannot sin. We cannot do evil against our Father today. What if God says here, in Romans chapter 10. 
It says here, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in whom they have not heard? We say in those so-called Baptist faith and brethren, you have not heard of Christ. You have not heard of the Holy God that we're preaching unto you today. We're not preaching that we're weak to sin. We're not preaching that it's impossible to live righteous like God. It is not impossible to live holy. It is not impossible to live godly. But God has given us grace today, men and brethren, to live holy today. We'll look at that right quick in John chapter 1. In John chapter 1, it says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, yet the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, men and brethren. As many of you that can hear the brethren today, as many of you that can receive our testimony today, men and brethren, you can become a son of God. When you have faith to deny your life, when you can have faith to not sin anymore, when you can have faith to put away the fornication, have faith to put away the adultery, have faith to put away the lying and the hating and killing of your neighbor, God says, I can give you power to become the sons of God. He came unto his own, and his own received him not, but as many as received him, to them gave me power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born out of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. And the word of God was made flesh, and the word of God was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And the same glory today, men and brethren, is still abiding on the earth. The same glory of God, that life of sin, that righteous and holy life, men and brethren, you're looking at it today. That testimony is still on the earth today by the grace of God. It says, we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten Son of God, of the Father, full of grace and truth. We say today that grace, that truth, can be abiding in you also today, if you can have faith in our testimony, men and brethren. It says, And of His fullness have we all received grace for grace. That grace is available. That grace is ready, men and brethren, if you can have faith today to turn away from your sins. We go back again. In Romans, chapter 6, it says here, Romans chapter 6, verses 1, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abide, men and brethren? God forbid. You see, God's grace is not, not going to continue to keep you in sin. God's grace is to keep you from the sin by the grace of God. God's grace is the power to keep you from sin. It's not that you should continue in your sins in saying that you are sinner saved by grace. It says, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? 
Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. As Christ was raised up from the dead, likewise, by the grace of God, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. And this is what we say, men and brethren. When you come to Christ, you become a new creature. A creature that cannot sin. Like we were reading in 1 John chapter 3. It says that whosoever is born of God cannot sin. Because the seed of God, that righteousness, because the Holy Ghost is dwelling in the Son. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. If we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Thank you, Jesus. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that in his form we should not serve sin, men and brethren. That's the word of God for us today. That we don't abide in no sin, men and brethren. What of God says, we look at in Matthew chapter 7, I believe. Matthew chapter 7. That's the reason God is not hearing the prayers of a sinner, men and brethren. A lot of people be thinking they know God or they're praying to God. But God is not hearing the prayers of a sinner. What God says here in Matthew chapter 7, verses 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. You see, we gotta have faith and desire to do God's will, men and brethren. It says, many will say unto me in that day, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Lord, have we not done many wonderful works in thy name? We've cast out devils in your name, Lord. But God, you know, will reply unto them, I never knew you. You worker of iniquity. Just wanted to say thank you for the word. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. 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 Thank Oh, okay. Yeah, I sure do. Uh, you have a track? So, uh, are you associated with the church? I am. I am actually. I'm actually. I'm, 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 I'm trying to understand all this. Yeah. Well, we're saying, uh, like you was hearing us, the problem with the world today, you got so many false prophets. And that's the word of God being manifested. The scripture says in 1 John chapter 4, believe not every spirit, but try the spirit. Yeah, because it says many false prophets are going out into the world. Yeah, and what the scripture says, the way you know, it says this, it, the Lord give you away. He's not going to leave you away. You're not going to be able to understand and figure things out. The Lord says, they that can confess, that Jesus Christ has come to the flesh. They are God. And I'm saying, it's not, again, it's not just something you say with your mouth. If Christ is really coming to your flesh, you're not going to be in the flesh. And the world, the false religion today, they can't make that confession. You ask any of them in the seventh day, like I say, Jehovah's Witness, Catholic, they always, they're all going to tell you, you sinners saved by grace. That's not the confession of the Son of God. You got to be able to get. You got to be able to confess that Jesus Christ has come in your flesh, and if that's truly taking place, yeah, you can't be in sin. 
you can't be a tip because you're paying a price. It's not a tip. Thank you very much. Amen. I ask the good Lord to put me his blood Amen. for protection. Because in these seasons, it's now time. A lot of people don't like what you're saying. Yeah, that's true. And there's persecution attached yeah, to it. Yeah, that's true too. Especially in the United States of America yeah. now, it's like everything has been compromised. Yeah. So, strength, sir. All right. Amen. Nice to meet you. 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 Nice to